Welcome back, welcome back. Nearly three years ago, images of a bruised and beaten Sakai Holland were seen around the world, highlighting the brutality of Robert Mugabe's regime. The Zimbabwean politician, Sekai, a founding member of the Movement for Democratic Change, was left with a fractured arm, fractured leg, and three broken ribs after she was arrested by the security police. Now following the power sharing agreement last year, Sekai is the new Minister for National Healing, Reconciliation and Integration. Sekai joins me now. It's been a difficult journey that you had to go after your beating up, you had to go to Australia to be treated, didn't you? Yes, I did. Um, I think I should put this in context. I'm very lucky that I was tortured in a group with 139 colleagues and that it was in a police station in broad daylight on the way to a church service. I think that for me it really built just in that moment the brutality of the machinery of violence to knock out um, dissent in our country. Yeah something that uh, we had fought against Smith, but which he had left intact, which was now being used. And that if MDC took over power and that machinery was intact, we would also use it against whoever we saw as our opposition. So in but a way- You wouldn't use it the way that uh, Mugabe is using it. Of course we would, if it was not reformed. <laughs> That's why you need security sector reform. But I'm saying because we were tortured as a group, I think the pain was much less. Also, the solidarity and the reaffirming of our commitment to really building democracy in Zimbabwe was made real during that nine hour episode of torture in the police station. We were then taken to the main police station, Harare Central, and further tortured there, and then taken to different police cells. I was put in one on my own which is when I really started to understand that this was what the machinery we were facing was like. I think that whole episode of things happening in a group gave us the strength we have now to build what we are trying to build together as Zimbabweans. And, and in terms of that, Sakai, uh, Human Rights Watch says in its latest report, ZANU-PF continues to use its control of the security forces and the judiciary to harass, abduct, torture and kill those it considers opponents, including senior MDC figures. Um, that's still going on? Yes, it is correct that we still have instances of violence. That is correct. That is because the machinery of violence is still intact. We as the organ, three ministers, got the President Mugabe, our Prime Minister Changirai and Deputy Prime Minister, to make strong statements against violence. They did. And in August, according to the Zimbabwe uh, Peace Project, in August, the statistics on violence in rural Zimbabwe were drastically reduced. What the organ is doing as a, a methodology is to really discover the sources of political violence and then advise our society, our ministries, how to put in place peace building culture mechanisms that take us out of a culture of violence, a culture of impunity. But surely the, the, from what we read, it's clear that the source of it is the violence and the torture is the ZANU-PF. No, no. It is the state that, like Smith ran the state with a violence machinery. That was never dismantled. Uh, the present government, before the global political agreement, they also had the uh, instruments of violence intact. They used those. When MDC takes over and the instruments of violence are intact, we will use those. You won't, that is you won't why surely not. You won't use torture. Let me will say you? this. Let me say this. Our society has cycles of violence where people who were victims in their lifetime end up in power as perpetrators. We need to break that. 
and hoping that Zimbabweans look together at our history and agree together to remove the ugly parts of our history. So we move forward together to build a peaceful history. And now, it's, a, it's not Mugabe. It is what was found there. That's the first thing we've identified. And that we should not underestimate the importance of dismantling the instruments of violence in their entirety. But when we were talking there about um, torture and so on, mm -hmm. um, and the machinery of mm -hmm. violence and mm -hmm. so on, and you said if we went into power, yes. we would use it. But because you, it's you there. Would, but you don't have to use torture, do you? So you, I but don't believe you would. I think you're saying the wrong thing. If it's an institution and it's institutionalized, what I'm trying to say to you is we need as a society to go into a peace-building environment. We in the organ must, with our people, find ways of moving out of this violent response to dissent and really start to understand uh, respect, tolerance, and to really start to understand that violence is abusive of ourselves, of our people, and really leave that aside together. Because if we don't do that, and we just move along with what is there, we really are in a very dangerous situation of perpetuating what is there. We need to dismantle it together, the people that are there today. Well, thank you very much for being with us, uh, Sakai, and you, you put it there very clearly, and uh, let's hope that reconciliation does come closer and closer. Thank you very much, Sakai. Thank you. After the break, we'll catch up again with that great comedian. He was born Scottish, but today he belongs to the world. Billy Connolly. <laughs>